Kirst Dinong can command a four-figure fee for a social media post. She's turned her career in athletics into a lucrative sideline. The 26-year-old has been named one of Singapore's top sports influencers in a number of different online rankings. I try to cater my content in a way that my followers can take home something from, from looking at my, my own um, account. And I started doing that because I look at other influencers and, as well. And I realised that I really love this kind of content where it's a bit more educational, something that I can benefit from it. And that's what I want my followers to also benefit from. When Kirsten first started on social media, her biggest fan was her mother. By the time she got her first paid campaign in 2018, she had around 4,000 followers. Today, she has a combined following of over 100,000 on Instagram and TikTok. I think what's unique about me is mainly about my fitness content and I'm an athlete as well. Most people could be just a fitness um, influencer who, who does it on a leisure, um, something more recreational. For my, but for my profile, I take on a bit more of a serious kind of outlook as well, online. There are over 200 million content creators globally and 2% make more than $1 million per year. It's an ecosystem estimated at 250 billion US dollars today and set to double by 2027. Personal branding for an influencer today is very important. An Instagram profile today is like your social CV. Rightfully, it will translate to monetary benefits. And the reason is because brands want to align with profiles. Gush Cloud International represents some of the biggest influencers in the world. And it says the bankable ones are those who create content based on their subject matter expertise. In order for you to first build a personal brand, you need to understand the subject matter expertise that you have. I think the second thing is that once you understand the subject matter expertise that you have, I think you need to ask yourself what is authentic content that you can create. Some of these bankable influencers who are like skincare dermatologists, they can make easily $1, 2000000 million on an annual basis just off their content. Um, but what makes them attractive is the fact that they drive awareness. They drive trust into the brand. And most importantly, they also drive sales and engagement. For influencers to align with a brand's mission and values, it's important for them to position their content in the right platform that reflects who they are. Study the platform. You need to really understand the platform that you are on. So I think Instagram is easy because it's it is still photo based, right? And TikTok is is actually more difficult because it requires for you to be a little bit more creative and it requires for you to do short forms of content. I think out of all these platforms, YouTube might be one of the most challenging, but yet because it's the most challenging, the audiences are most engaged. One mistake influencers tend to make is taking on campaigns that don't reflect their personal brand. At the start, I took on anything and everything um, because I did it as my pocket money when I first started, but I realised that, hey, this is not really what I want to, to show myself as. My criteria has to be something that I, I relate to, something that I actually believe in even, because I am pushing this out to my followers and if I'm not credible in it, my followers will start to see me as not someone credible and I will lose them as well, which they, because of them, I am... I am who I am online. So they are just as important as how I grow my own branding. It's about understanding your market, knowing your market, and being very clear about who you are. The key takeaway for branding is you have to be yourself. You have to understand who you are and then reflect that towards your target group. Although building a personal brand may seem easy, online audiences have high expectations of influencers. Nobody comes as they are. Everybody makes a decision, whether conscious or not, how they want to present themselves. 
So the choices that we make about our hair, about the glasses, about the watch, about what we wear, sometimes very unconsciously, those choices are choices that have something to do with who we want to be, how we want to be seen as a brand. In the competition for eyeballs, everyone wants to go viral, and a past track record is no guarantee of future success. You have to keep up to the trends of the online social media and the digital trends because it's always ever changing. New ones are coming up, they are doing well as well. And in this line, it's very easy to just phase out and just not be relevant anymore. So it's very important to stay relevant to what's happening out there. I want my followers to, to see my page as something very positive, something happy that they can always look forward to seeing.